Hi. Today I have the pleasure to welcome Alexander Dima to uh, the channel. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Good to be here again. It would be interesting to hear your uh, yeah. little bit about uh, your philosophy when you uh, when you design this amp. There are some uh, very special and interesting features here. So, so let's let's begin from the from the left here. You have you have a. On well, top of the input button, you have a single coil P90 humbucker switch. Yes, and that is to uh, each pickup type has something that is typical for it. Sometimes they sound pretty close to each other. So what this does is uh, it emphasizes the character of the pickup. So a single coil with a, this switch in the SC single coil position will sound more like a single coil. Yeah. If you change to P90, a P90 pickup will come forward. We're talking about uh, frequencies or, or also dynamics and no, no frequency. It's it's a it's a tonal characteristic. Can you say something about uh, what 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 uh, are the typical frequencies of single coil <laughs> then and ninety and humbucker? Single coil is more in the high mid. Yeah. P ninety is. A lower mid. It's a it's a mid mid no, it's, it's mid it's bit, mid range a pickup. A bit more specific. I can't give you an exact frequency yeah. because they yeah. they differ. But I, I if I say that it's high mid range frequencies, it's certain frequency range. Yeah. That changes with the tone control of the uh, on the guitar. Yeah. So there is a certain shape of a frequency response that. My, one could say is uh, I wouldn't say typical, but uh, rather characteristic for for a single coil pickup. Mm -hmm. You can have a single a high inductance single coil, and it will be different. Yeah. So it is. So it emphasizes character of a pickup. Yeah. But having said this. It doesn't mean that if you have a single coil pick pickups on the on your guitar, you need to put that switch in the single coil position. It's not mandatory. You can use <laughs> you can use single I coil. I was afraid. You, you can yeah. you you can play a Telecaster yeah. with a lipstick pickup through a humbucker position. Yeah, you will find new different tones. But but in, in general, you you would say that the single coil guitars sounds better with single coil setting. <sighs> Again, it's subjective. Yeah. It is very subjective because, uh, um, for example, I don't like original lipstick pickup on a tele. No? No. Why not? Too dark? There is something irritating in its sound <laughs> to me. All right. I haven't analyzed why, but. I don't know. Maybe I was exposed to some noises in that frequency range or whatever. But it sounds nice in a P90 position. Okay. <laughs> so something happens. Yeah. Whatever works. Yeah. Now I have to disclose one thing because there were some discussions where people were speculating what it does to the input impedance of the amp. Well, I was a little mean. Yes, you should. <laughs> that switch has nothing to do with the input. It affects voicing of the amp somewhere else down the signal chain. Well, uh, That's it. A bit more specific. No. <laughs> no, no, it's. Uh, I think it's enough because yeah. uh, uh, 
I know a couple of amp designers who will just say, yeah, okay, that's mm. obvious. For some it's mm. obvious, for some, so let it be. Yeah, <laughs> let's, okay. let's move on to the right. here. But then you have a bass and trebon. Oh, we have this, then... this funky switch, six position switch, which is called bottom, loose and tight. Nothing equivocal about this. I hope. <laughs> and it's called trim, bottom trim, with the... In one position, the trim, this function is disabled, and in other, it's active. Basically, it's a high-pass filter with six switchable frequencies. And it's a, what is called, a second-order filter, which means the the slope of the filter is uh, 12 decibels per octave. Okay, which, which of the frequencies then uh, for, for each dot here? Now this is uh, the lowest is at around 75 hertz. And then it goes in steps up to around uh, 280, 300 hertz. It, and it has like and it has a dumb, it does a dual uh, dual job with frequencies like 75 95 110 that is more for uh, uh, matching the uh, amplifier to the uh, loudspeaker cabinet because sometimes if, so if it is boomy and so on mm -hmm then if you you can do go up to 120 let's say you have a speaker loudspeaker cabinet that has a resonance frequency together with the loudspeaker element let's say you are in this room and you play rather loud usually <laughs> yeah you do i know <laughs> uh, you might notice that it puts some stuff there into resonance and uh, becomes boomy. Then you go to 110 hertz and that disappears. The sound becomes tighter, but maybe it's not that that strong in the bottom. But you, like you, 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 you remove 12 decibel then, uh, of well, everything under. No, no, no. Uh, when I say that it is, has a cutoff frequency at 100 hertz, that means it, uh, the response has dropped 3 decibels from flat response at 100 hertz. And from 100 hertz down, it's like a straight slope, 12 de decibels per octave. Okay. So at, 40, at, at 50 hertz down, it's already 15 decibels down. Hmm. Okay? So from 100 hertz then 80 hertz you have a, something like 6 db, db cut you lose some of that uh, punchy bottom feeling mm -hmm. what you can do is go to the bass control and just boost bass a little so you will have a frequency response like from let's start that it is i'm here at uh, 40 hertz okay it goes like this then, because you boosted the bass control, it creates a, a peak and goes down. And that peak will be somewhere around 140, 150 hertz. Mm -hmm. And suddenly you have not boomy, but tight low end. So where, where is the, uh, the bass? Uh, if you don't uh, engage the, uh, the bottom, uh, then the, the then the bass will do a shelving function from uh, 60 hertz mm. so on it so anyway but if you go beyond into the over 200 hertz range to 300 there yeah that is not only removing the boominess and everything uh, making the bass tighter. It becomes more of 
adjusting the amp to work well in overdrive mode. Because if you let the full frequency range into the overdrive circuit, it will the low frequencies will muddy up yeah. the whole sound. You need to you need to cut the bass out. Yeah, like the difference between a super lead and a yes. super bass, for instance. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's uh, if it if you have if you set it up on uh, two hundred between two hundred three hundred hertz three dB down, then it cuts everything below below hundred fifty hertz. It will hundred fifty hertz. It will be down where somewhere around attenuated by thirty six decibels. Thirty six. So uh, then you can really uh, push the gain and drive and everything, and you won't get this thing in the low end. Mm -hmm. That's like that's how I prefer it. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's how it works. And uh, bass and treble con uh, tone controls—they are not uh, in a traditional Fender Marshall tone stack configuration. It is something called James, mm -hmm. which means when they are at uh, 12 o'clock position, the frequency response. Uh, in an original James, frequency response from input to output will be flat. But this is not a listening amplifier, it's a part of an instrument. And since a guitar is a very funky instrument, because a guitar is a, a mid-range instrument that we are trying to push through an amplifier and reproduce through a bass woofer speaker. And we are trying to get treble out of it. So we can't... S flat frequency response doesn't sound good. So, so how is it modified then? This is, this is done so that uh, at this position it has a not a uh, violent but a reasonably mild hump in mid range around 600 hertz so we have uh, we have bass cut and it boosts at uh, it at the uh, around 120 hertz it will boost it's a shelving filter up and down plus minus 12 decibels and same with the treble, but in flat it has a, a little hump. So like it focuses your, your mid-range. So how much is the how for, much is that hump there? Four decibels. Alright. Something like this. Mm -hmm. But if you cut the bottom like this and cut treble all like this, it will be a huge, just one whole, whole big bump or hump. Uh, and if you max it, then what? 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 Uh, what? What would? Uh... That will be max there, zoop, zoop, like this. It will be a very strange smiley. Yeah. So, so because so it will go deep. So, so it will be. It where, where, where it, if, it, if you think of it like this, where, where, where does it go down in frequency and where, where is it up? This one, uh, if I remember correctly, this one has a dip at <laughs> around 800. Yeah. Around that hydrant. And when uh, is it up again, so to speak? Well, it, when it is up again, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a little lower. It will be around six, six, seven hundred. So, so it's a very, very small. No, no, no. Very it's small, happy mouth. Well, in the middle. Well, it's not like, mm, but it's a smiley. Yeah. And uh, the top of it, it's somewhere in the middle. All right. It can be tweaked. 
All right. Uh, so, so, so then we have. Then we are. Stage. Then we have gain. It's a one knob, but it affects gain in two consecutive gain stages. So how many are there in total in the end? Let me count. <laughs> <laughs> One on the input, then we have the filter which is uh, based around the cathode follower, that's two. Then this is passive, then we have a gain stage. So we are two, well three gain stages, four, five, drive and gain. It's around this five or six gain stages altogether, depending if you if you call uh, a so-called uh, concertina phase inverter a gain stage because it has a gain of one. Yeah. So it's it doesn't you're, you're it, it doesn't amplify. But but is is it uh, is is it uh, are you counting the power? Power amp is one gain stage or a sever? Well, it's a power gain. It's not a voltage gain. Okay. So it's seven, it's seven, seven voltage gains? Uh, six altogether, including including in there are also two, two cathode followers. And are, are the tubes? Are, all are tubes. The tubes all tubes. There is uh, the only thing I use uh, transistors and diodes for is for uh, rectifying the supply voltage. How about LEDs in this in the foot switch, that's it. But what, what kind of power tubes is, does it use? It's, uh, it's a funny tube. It's a tube that uh, officially doesn't exist. Okay, <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let me. Yeah. The tube that I like, there are two tubes I like in amps. I don't like EL34s, I don't know why, I don't like them. But I like KT66 and I like something called 7591. 7591 was the last tube designed. Specific power tube designed specifically for audio in the heyday of tube technology. And Gibson have used it, Ampeg have used it, other. There is another tube called 7686 or 7868. I always mix up. Anyway, doesn't matter which is same tube as 7591 but uh, has a different base and different pins so it needs a different socket okay Fa same tube no problem and uh, I could get a bunch of those and uh, that's a very good tube. I'm using, still using those. But they are exactly the same as, as if, if you the socket plus tube uh, is the same 7591. Whatever, like the, the whole thing one. inside the bottle is the same thing. All right. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, one day I saw an ad on eBay that somebody in Hong Kong was selling a tube with a uh, type identifi the identification number that I haven't seen before, but I was claiming it was an exact uh, re replacement for 7686, 6868, the same thing. And it was made by Brimer in the UK. Huh? So I bought two pairs for test. 
and uh, I opened one, broke one just for fun <laughs> to check what's in it. <laughs> because I had I for had, science for science. I mean, yeah. take one for the team, yeah. okay? Yeah. And I had one uh, Westinghouse original seventy five ninety one. And I compare it. This is this the 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 guts, the whole metal structure were identical. Okay. So what was that one called? Do you have a? That one was suddenly called EL five o six. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I recognize. That's what's in it, one. Huh? Yeah, that's yeah. what's what's in yeah. it. And it's a, no, it's a bright uh, more as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. The, it's so an found, it's a it's a, it's a very interesting story. Yeah. Zelmer in UK was using original American 7686. So why is a Brimer made tube with Sylvania made guts bottled in England called Eel? 506 instead of 76868. Why? It's the same, same pinout. And I found there was a small difference in specifications. The original American made tube had pins that were that had were in uh, 0.8 millimeters diameter wire and they had a, a socket called Novar. The Yale 506 was made with a thicker pins that when pushed into that socket would doesn't work. So they couldn't really call it 7868 because they differed by a, that was all. So the third one where, where a two plus socket is the same? So, so it is, well, it's, it's made in the UK and I knew that uh, Russian tubes in that same equivalent series and so on, they had one millimeter socket, uh, pins. So I bought the ceramic military, ex-Soviet army, whatever sockets, well, are just fine. And that's what's uh, mm -hmm. what's in this. So Selmer in England was using that tube. It was probably. Do you know which apps? Uh, oh, I don't, I don't remember now. Don't remember now. It's can, uh, been it's been a long time ago. I was looking at Zelmer's uh, stuff, but anyway, I uh, got in contact with that dealer in Hong Kong, and he said, "Yeah, yeah, I have uh, two boxes, seventy-two tubes in uh, per box." Oh, fine. Send me both. <laughs> so, one hundred and forty-four tubes. Yeah. 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 That's quite the stash. <laughs> well, I sold some. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I some, some some people who have uh, those who had the uh, Fisher, uh, old Fisher and Scott uh, stereo hi-fi amplifiers. They needed them, and, uh, and I don't mind. So I saw. Uh, I think I sold uh, one third of them. I need to. I need to have a stash to as uh, spares for. Uh, existing customers and put in mm. new amps and, and yeah. that's it. Anyway, there is one section that was uh, a lot of talk about on the uh, after the review in Premier Guitar came out and that was the mid-range EQ. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting. And that is again uh, a bit different. And cold. <laughs> uh, look, uh, when I design, I go for. Of course.
course, you can't invent new tube circuits. A gain stage around a triode is a gain stage around a triode, whether it sits in a Marshall, a Fender, or high water, whatever. It's the same architecture. It's a triode, it's an anode resistor, it's a cathode resistor, it's a grid leak, it's a supply. That's it. Mm. Okay, there are some very special circuits that are used in radio frequencies. But who needs a one mega or two megahertz bandwidth in a, in a guitar amplifier? It's, okay, these, uh, these, uh, these circuits have been used in audio, but uh, again, it's uh, making things more complicated. Why use two triodes in a totem pole, like one above the other and tricks and so on? when you can do it with one triode, and the same thing. It's the old principle, KISS. Keep it simple, stupid. As simple as possible, or, but not simpler. So, uh, and I think I often do the what if. What if I do something like this? What if I connect those two or three gain stages with the different filters between them and uh, all that stuff? And uh, I can do an uh, active EQ, like in tube or I can do a passive EQ, just because to check if, if it is doable. It will, will it be functional or not? And does it produce usable sound? That is the main thing, because you can have a an amplifier, whatever, or something with knobs and switches and MIDI and hit this and that, it produces a million sounds and only two of them are us usable. And it's more really sounds good uh, at, at all settings and even the, the, the extreme settings. Yeah. So, so, so it would be, uh, be interesting to hear the philosophy behind the, the uh, the mid-range, both, both when it comes to the well, you can, sounds and the... Uh, you can do one thing that uh, uh, one producer here in, in town, the music Amatic studio, uh, he, bor he, he borrows my amps from time to time. He never looks at the knobs when he sets up a guitar session. He stands like this on his hands on the knobs and he listens. He turns the knobs yeah. and he listens. He doesn't care how the knobs are. That's probably wise. Because he says, we, I agree, many people listen with eyes. And they think that, oh, oh, oh that uh, bass and treble, they usually need to be like this. No, they're not. Whatever well, works. If it works, it sounds good. That's it. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we have a mid, it is a dip filter or a notch filter, so it doesn't really have a boost, it creates the notches. Mm. It can be set at four different notch center frequencies, and I numbered them only one, two, three, four instead of putting down frequency numbers, like when you see in a, uh, in a room equalizer or even in, uh, on, uh, on EQs, on recording, uh, recording mixes, on PA mixes, they give the, oh, this is like on uh, 100 hertz, and then it is uh, 160 hertz, and if it is an octave filter, then it is 100, 200, 400. Doesn't say anything. It's somewhere okay. It's good for finding resonances in, in, in the room, but it's, it's not for tone shaping, in my opinion. What, I'm, what I did is that At two, the center frequency is to say, I would say the A. Like you give me an A and you tune mm. the guitar. That's the frequency of the dip. So about 440. Around 440. I mean, depending. On, okay, if it 
if it is a 435 or 450, it's good enough for jazz, so it's good enough for rock and roll, okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But the distance is one half octave to next. Yeah. Not one, one down and two up from, uh, from two. So down. it's half down. Mm -hmm. It's So we go start at bottom, some frequency, okay? Half an octave up, you're at 440. Another is another half, don't care, the frequency, because another top, that it will mm. be a full octave from position two. Mm. And if position two is at A, it's still at A, but an octave higher. Yeah. So how much, uh, when, when you were... <laughs> When you put the, uh, the so when the, way so down. when oh, the when the, when the when the mid, it is between dip and hump. Which is not a peak. Normally you would have dip and peak. When when the equalizer goes like that, does a dip like this, mm -hmm. and then does a peak like this. And peak like this, I don't, it, it sounds horrible. So uh, that's, therefore it is like, it goes from uh, cut like this, goes up, and you will get a hump like this. A wide mid boost. So how, how many decibels uh, at the very extreme? At the very extreme, it is, that is very uh, sensitive to uh, component tolerances. I'm trying to keep it everything measured and top, but uh, let's say it's it, it's uh, at least 20 decibels attenuation at the center frequency. And the Q is is uh, very narrow. Q is uh, very narrow, but reasonably narrow, so so it still say, stays uh, what I call musical as a tone control and not a sound effect. Yeah. So, it still sounds very natural, it still sounds yeah. like an instrument that could sound like... Yeah, because like the, 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 the cue is like uh, one and a half, between one and a half and two, yeah. maximum. But when it goes to the hump... So, the, so if you go up, so we go up to the mid here. Hello, sorry, yeah, the mid, mid. yeah. Uh, if you go like this, you will get a 4 dB hump. And that that hump will have a Q value around uh, maximum one uh, uh, one half. One half. Yeah, not one, but one half. Mm. So, so it, it must be more when it was all the way down. It, that must have been more than two and a half then, or around two. Okay. Could be two and a half uh, around two, but it's. Or, or then, and then you have a, so so cut two and a half, two and a half Q. And here is uh, boost four decibels with an uh, 0.5. Uh, yeah, that between 0.5 and mm -hmm. 0.75. It's and when uh, it's maxed, then it is like very wide, very wide. Uh, not a hump, but a belly. Let's say. If I lay down and my be beer belly is like <laughs> that shape, I know how it is. So, <laughs> so it's all like this. Oh, okay. Okay? <laughs> That's good. Perfect to describe. Uh, now what happens is here is something called accent. Yeah. And that is also most active from the dip down to the top. Yeah. Let's if this is a frequency response. From where you s sit, you see this is low end, this is high end, mm -hmm. and in the middle is a notch. Mm -hmm. In a normal position, accent down, mm -hmm. you have a balance between low end and high end, like this. Mm -hmm. If you go to accent, it will change. Like this. Oh, okay. But the notch frequency stays the same. Which is the notch frequency? It, or it, it's on, on, on every, on each, on, on, on each, yeah. on whatever yeah. you said. Yeah. It goes like this. Mm. It's like it's seagull okay. flying in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I remember it forever. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, so, so it simply Sorry makes about. this whole sound 
because what you really want in a, some uh, some manufacturers of bass amplifier, uh, amplifiers have implemented that filter, which is called a dip before dip before peak. So it's like going from low frequency, you create a notch, and right after notch, you go a, di a peak. Mm -hmm. So it's like, like the thing that you can do with this. You cut off yeah, like low, you described in but, the you, but you do a boost. Mm -hmm. boost. So it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's similar. Yeah, like d described earlier in the video. Yeah, you can, you can do the same thing in, into the mid-range and so on. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it focuses the mid-range a little better. I, I didn't do it here. But you have the accent because when you have bass and you lift the whole, the whole uh, spectrum after the notch, it makes the whole thing brighter. Mm -hmm. So here it is like the mid-boost. What it really does is that it's, uh, uh, it doesn't remove this section from the circuit. It's uh, this whole mid filter, it's not uh, like a tone stack, it's different, but it's input and output, and there is a ground reference to the circuit. It's like some people do on the tone stack, that remove the stone, lift the st tone stack, so they lift the, the whole thing. Bass, treble, and mid control is, oh, that is too much. I, I only uh, lift the mid section, mm -hmm. so it goes through. I'm left with the bass and treble and so on, but still have a lot of control. Mm -hmm. If you lift the tone stack on the marsh, you have no control at all. Mm. But uh, it's a partial lift. Yeah. So if you think this is uh, too complicated, well, just lift it and uh, work with this. Mm. You can do it. I can't do it. I don't play the guitar. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, that's quite weird. <laughs> you, you figured it out pretty well. Anyway. I used to say somebody was asking me and I said, look, I'm not a guitar player, which I see as an advantage. Because if I was a guitar player, my amps would be very strongly influenced by my tone preferences. So I play like this, this is my sound, this is my amplifier, fine. Well, I'm a guitar listener. And in between there is something called crystal. If you play clean, then crystal will be... It's not the same thing as uh, brilliance or bright control or bright or... or uh, high cut on uh, on different amps because this is a post post uh, post driver stage or basically uh, a shelving uh, shelving uh, shelving attenuator for high frequencies mm -hmm. or high uh, Let's say, I, I wouldn't say it's a full full treble because it also uh, affects high mid. But it's not like a from a certain frequency cut everything like this. It's this frequency down and then you have a shelf. Hmm. So it goes like this. So, so when, when this, this one is max, then, then, then it's... Oops, sorry. Then it then is... Uh, then, then it's... Uh, kind of inactivated or...? Well, that is sort of like uh, inactive because it lets everything through. So, and how... Uh, what, what, does have, what happens if you... If you pull, pull, if you, if you pull down, then it is you, you, you are pulling certain uh, frequency range above... Uh, above the... Uh, how do you call that? Break frequency... Uh, limit frequency, yeah, something like this. When it is here from, from 3 dB down, it pushes the whole spectrum up and down. 
So this is more important on uh, highly distorted overdriven signals because those signals are very rich in overtones. High, high order overtones which in clean signals are somewhere in low, they are just like, like little spice. Mm. They can become dominating in overdriven signal. Yeah. And they can do many things. They can sound harsh, they can sound irritating, they can burn your speakers. <laughs> it's, uh, so that's what some people did with the high cut, that it's a just like a brick will cut off everything above certain frequency. But then you lose something. Okay, the sound becomes softer, like more rounded off, but when you use that high, uh, high cut control and over a certain position, something is missing. Yeah, but with, with this one, you, you keep you keep the distortion. With this, and, with and this, it is the whole distorted thing and so on is, but those high overtones that were like magnified by this whole overdrive and distor distorting process. The highest fundamental from guitar is around one kilohertz, 1.1 something, around one kilohertz. Yeah. So you have, if we talk about uh, odd overtones, you have one, three, five, kilohertz and then you have seven mm -hmm. up to fifth it's manageable it is musical this seventh is messing things up is that because it's an uneven or is it because uh... well because it's too far from fundamental so it would be it's the same for the sixth and, and, and the eighth overtone as well The thing is that there are never just overtones, like harmonics. There is always intermod there are always always intermodulations. And seventh is really messing up that what is called sideband modulation, whatever. Mm. I don't really know. I read it in some uh, papers from uh, Ton, uh, uh, German uh, school of. Uh, uh, they had some uh, some school where you could uh, train to be a music producer and stuff like that, and mm -hmm. you could gain a official Ton Meister title. Okay. How, how uh, on this app? How, how uh, do you have? Is there? Because because we, we you, you discussed the, the crystal here and, and that's and that, that, the, that's basic. That's basically the uh, where it so where so, it so works. The shelving, uh, the shelving uh, frequency is 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 uh, taking that seventh nasty. Yes, in, yes, in, absolutely. In it, it it even takes oh. the fifth, mm. but because it doesn't cut off like this, mm. but it only pushes down, so you can mm. find that. That position where, mm. to keep, where, keep where, the where, where, the, uh, where this final spicing yeah. is still there. Mm. It's not overwhelming. It is. It is there. Mm. That's what makes you take another scoop of ice cream. That the last piece of pistachio nut. <laughs> <laughs> I like comparisons to food, yeah, I, I've noticed. to drink, <laughs> to boobs. <laughs> <laughs> now, loop. Okay, so it is marked that it has two functions. Loop on or off, or 
rhythm, rhythm and lead. It's very simple explanation. If there is nothing connected to the loop externally, you can use the loop as a boost or unboost, so you can get both on clean and overdriven uh, rhythm volume and lead volume. If you put, uh, let's say, any time-based effect like uh, reverb, delay, whatever, in the loop, then it's on or off. Now, the loop itself, uh, somebody will ask me, well, is it a serial loop or a parallel loop? And I say both. Same time. It's, it's a crossfade control. You have send mm -hmm. and you return. And then it is called mix. With this control you mix proportion between dry signal and wet signal, the return signal. If nothing is there, you can send somewhere dry output send a level. Is, uh, that, uh, is it solid state or tube? Uh, no, level? it's tube. It's tube. 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 Cool. And uh, you have... Um, you can change the gain on the return buffer from 0 dB to 15 dB, which means you can use a line level effect or, pet or a standard guitar pedal mm -hmm. in the loop. So that's about it. Mm -hmm. And you have, access, you have access to uh, to BIOS controls, so you can uh, BIOS your tube, tubes uh, yourself. It's very simple. This is ground, this is test point, and this is test point. Uh, it says 7868 tube. When you connect a, mo uh, uh, a voltmeter between between ground and uh, and this test point A, you test by us on this tube, and you have level. You take a small screwdriver and turn it until it is this and that. Mm -hmm. I usually begin with connecting my voltmeter between this point and this test point. And then I use the balance control so it s sets the same level by bringing whatever the voltmeter is uh, showing to zero. Or three, four millivolts, whatever. And once I balance them, I can go there, recheck and see if I get 30, 35, if not, then I go on the level and just adjust it. Mm -hmm. cool. There is no this uh, juggling. Oh, I, I tried well. I set up left tube and I go for the right tube. I set up the right tube. I check again the left tube. Oh, it's out of, and I need to go this several mm -hmm. times. This is set, set, balance within. Mm -hmm. That's great. Well, that's it. Mm -hmm. Let's, let's check out your, your uh, cabs. I'm, I'm going to bring them here. We have them over here. Then you can yeah. comment on those also. Okay. We have one 210 and one, uh, uh, one 112. And take the whole amp and put it here. Okay, so, so it fits uh, if I take the top off. It will fit here. Yeah. Cool. And you have a combo. Mm. Mm. So what, what, uh, what uh, this is a 112? This is a 112. What speakers do you have in it? It's a uh, Jensen Neodymium Tornado. What material is it built of? This is a birch plywood. Yeah. It is made by a local company here who are specialists in uh, High-end loudspeakers, uh, studio monitors, uh, tour speakers, and so on. Mm -hmm. cool. The front here is, uh, ex besides its exceptionally decorative effect, 
which should be put in the, um, put in the Museum of Modern Art. <laughs> this stuff, some people might have seen, uh, if they are old enough, on old Gibsons and I think some other amps, that pattern of uh, mesh on the grill, on the speaker grill. It has a, a very pleasant uh, effect as it sp uh, increases the angle of how wide the spread of high frequencies is. So you don't have this effect that when you walk the, there in front of it, it is, uh, oh, it's nice, oh, it's a lot of, a lot of trouble, and then it is, no, the trouble is spread wider. Can you show us how? Well, this is called uh, acoustic lens. All right. Nothing else, just... So the, it's, just, it's just a pattern you... Yeah, it's like yeah. the streets in, uh, slits in, in, in optics, the yeah. diffractions and so on. Mm. Full metal. Uh, I can put it somewhere. Now, uh, this is a construction that I have avoided as much as possible any parallel walls and uh, right angles. Mm -hmm. So if you, oh, well, let's say, I can check, you can see it, that this roof is not horizontal, it, it slopes, mm -hmm. okay? You see, it's not so heavy. That's very heavy. And then, this is what looks like a ported cabinet, but the thing is that this bottom wall is not parallel with, the, with, the, with this floor here. Mm -hmm. It slopes like this. Mm -hmm. So this whole thing, this, uh, let's call it port, it is together with the cavity behind the loudspeaker, it fall, it is like skeleton folded horn. What the skeleton folded horn? Yeah. What's that? Basic. It's just like this and this. Mm -hmm. It's like acoustic horn, like you see there. Oh, okay, sorry. No. Yeah, no. Mm -hmm. So it's like uh, skeleton, that means the simplest. Mm -hmm. But it still accentuates the mid range. So this is it. Now, here is the trick. The buffer is removable. It's not fixed. It's just attached with these screws. Mm -hmm. And this attachment screw is something that I refuse to patent. Because if I patent it, I need to disclose what it is. But I will tell you, the first time I showed the convoy in Nashville, I used standard M4 screw with a plastic plastic uh, washer and thing. And if somebody was playing, suddenly I was hearing the <laughs> metallic. The, the mm. screw was unscrewing itself. Those will not unscrew themselves. Okay. Interesting. That's I'm, it. I'm not, not going to ask you how, how it's done. That's it. It's, uh, no, it's, uh, it's nothing revolutionary. No. All, everything that goes into it is, uh, you can buy it in a, in a shop that sells uh, hardware like doorknobs and stuff and like that. It's just how it... It, uh, it locks in a, in a certain way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then and it can be made a 210 also? Yes. We don't need to take it off. You see that there are two tens mm -hmm. in there. Yeah. Uh, and you see that three rack units get fit perfectly well. Yeah. There is just a blank panel and an old Rocktron guitar effects processor. 
So what what the uh, amps? Uh, what speakers? speakers are uh, two eminent speakers, different ones. Yeah. It's a 10 inch uh, Texas Heat and a Raging Cajun. Mm -hmm. Why do you choose those two? Because I got them free from cabinets. <laughs> <laughs> Now you see, I use when I use when I build a speaker cabinet for guitar with two speakers. I always use two, use two different. They, they span a great space of uh, stones together. Yeah, hmm. it's like for the the, the two twelve uh, cabinet for Tube Wonder. It has one private jack, which is ceramic magnet, and one red fang, which is alnico magnet. Mm -hmm. Each of them. By itself, oh, okay, and uh, two private jacks is fine, or two red fangs is also fine. But a uh, private jack and a red fang in a 212 cabinet placed diagonally as Mums Fili Baba. <laughs> that's Swedish. Swedish Mumbo Jumbo. Yeah, that's. Yeah. And, and why did you choose the, uh, the uh, Neo? Uh, Jensen Neo, do you I chose it because I liked this frequency response that I saw. Mm -hmm. How does it compare to a greenback, for instance, or, or a vintage 30? Ah, that is a very, very good question. Because the first 212, the first cab I made the prototype was a 210, and I put two British new production speakers. They are called... I don't want to talk badly about the speaker manufacturer because it was, these were very nice speakers. They were even uh, called that they are greener than the greens, okay, sound-wise. Okay. Fine. So I had two tens in the, in the cabinet and we liked how they sound. Well, it was fine. We could get the treble from them, but I noticed that I needed to, like, tweak the knobs. And uh, at the... Uh, at the... Uh, no. Amp show in Nashville. To, uh, I had the 112 cabinet with me and I got a Jensen speaker in Nashville. Mm -hmm. Sat in, put in the 12. To th that ha happy accident? Yeah, sort of, mm -hmm. but I, no, no, I ordered it because I, mm -hmm. I, I ch checked the specs and checked the uh, soundproof. I liked it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a great and, speaker. And we plugged it in. I just switched over from those two tens over to this one. And that was like if somebody lifted a heavy blanket from the from those greens. Mm -hmm. So it I would say the greens are great for pop, jazz, absolutely. Funk, stuff like that. But if you really want to rock out, that's the speaker. I tried this with a different speaker. Amazingly, there is a combo cab in the States where there are two cheap Celestian speakers, two tens. I think they were like $25 each. Okay, maybe $10, $30 maybe. I don't, re I, I don't remember right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was... I was living in the vapors of certain liquids. <laughs> <laughs> and they sounded amazing in that cabinet. Then they tested, tested then some another guy who also had a 212 cabinet, but straight box, nothing else. Just put them in his cabinet and it sounded like shit. Really interesting there with uh, oh, well, the you will, you, you will compare, you can play a 
play some riffs with this and then mm. switch over to this and mm. you will see what, is, mm. what speakers what the speakers make uh, for sound it's mm. sometimes people think oh speakers is a speaker no it's the last link in the chain and it has the most influence mm. I mean forget testing different tubes and all that stuff and fiddling with transformers not this no I, try, I totally agree. Try yeah. different speakers. Mm. One cab, one buffle in the cab, four buffles on the shelf. Save space. Well, thank you very much, Alexander. It, That's it. It has been extremely interesting. Uh, I, I'm uh, really glad about this.